Good morning, everyone, and welcome to day four of the Autism and Neurodiversity Workplace Masterclass. Um, with myself, Ben Holmes, and ex-professional footballer John O'Kane. Hello. How are you doing, John? You alright? Not bad, not bad. Good, good. Got a bit of a sniffle. Might be the Omicron, I don't know. <laughs> Hope not. Well, at least it's last day. You can get this last day in wheels, then you can you can have a couple of weeks off. <laughs> um. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the last four days, everyone, whether you're watching it behind, whether you've been with us every day, watch it on YouTube. Um, so this is the last day with John. We've got a few more um, sessions coming up until Sunday as well, so make sure you watch those. Um, so we're going to look at more the, the mental health side of it today as well. So we've touched on, we've done quite a bit on autism, neurodiversity, what the conditions are how they affect your employees and customers and how you know if you, you as a business can support employees better then they'll be more productive they work harder they'll be happier in the job and they're more likely to increase your income as a result of that so we're going to get going um, can we get the next slide on please So as I've said, we will be on YouTube as well. <coughs> so if you watch on there, hello, and next bit. So I'm just gonna go over the key points from day three. So we looked at what was ADHD, so mainly the inattentiveness and or the hyperactivity and uh, impulsiveness. And next bit looked at the ADHD strengths that they can bring to your business and um, so the motivation passion drive uh, risk-taking um, hyper focus of the really into a certain task um, or they enjoy certain aspects of the job and um, they can really do well at it and next bit <coughs> what is this braxia we looked at that so mainly gross and fine motor skills and next bit <coughs> and then there's the the strengths that come with dyspraxia so leadership creativity empathy and determination next bit looked at what dyslexia is um obviously there's various problems people with that they can have, so it's reading, writing, spelling, memory, uh, listening, and then we also looked at the, the strengths um, related to dyslexia. Uh, next bit, please. So, outside the box thinkers, uh, visual thinkers as well, um, sort of pattern detections. Um, some people with dyslexia can be really practical as well. Um, now just before we move on to the next bit, just want to reiterate as well, obviously we've got John with us, if you've been with us every day you know who John is, what what he did, um, but if you're actually just joining us for the first time today and you're watching, him, well, you're watching today's and you're going to go back and watch the others, um, I mean, do you want to just quick, quickly give a quick overview of yourself again John, you know, who you played for, people you played yeah, with? Like say the point of this, like I say, is um, me being in, a, in that environment uh, with a disability and not really speaking about it, to be honest, you know, uh, coming out and saying anything. So a lot of like, you know, hiding what I had sort of thing, you know, but all this now, you know, today's society, it's, it's bringing it all out now. So there's a lot, a lot of people who have it who, who you think wouldn't have it. A lot of stuff on here that I didn't think I had, but I have got looking at it that we've gone through you even like listening to you is sort of helping me because i'm saying it's it's you know especially the adhd as well growing up uh, a bit of dyslexia um you know things like that it's quite an eye opener to be honest but yeah it's it's um it's been good this week yeah cool well for me anyway <laughs> no I've, I've really enjoyed it really enjoyed it as well really enjoyed it um, yeah, just thought to just explain it. Cause like I say, 
Some people have watched it all the way through, some will just be joining live for the first time now. We might have new members in the group um, who sort of joined us late, which is which is absolutely fine. So we just want to sort of cater for everyone as well. Um, yeah, so obviously John spoke about um, you know obviously playing football, being being autistic, um, possibly ADHD. Um, so yeah, some of the struggles you may face, some of the, the strengths as well. Um, obviously playing for the biggest club. Probably the biggest club in, in the country at least, Manchester United, possibly the biggest club in the world. <coughs> you know, played under Alex Ferguson, you know, times are different then, um, in the 90s, for a lot of stuff really. Obviously played with some of the biggest um, icons, the club of art, you know, David Beckham, Roy Keane, Eric Cantona, etc. Um, so yeah, let's get going for the next bit please. So next slide. So. Um, this is a sort of last bit towards the last bit what we're looking at for new adversity before we sort of move on. Now, obviously, um, some of these have been confirmed. Um, for example, Michael Jordan, um, they confirmed he's got ADHD. Muhammad Ali had dyslexia. Um, Alice Genge, I can't say his, I've said his name right, I'm not massive into rugby. Um, plays at the moment, got dyspraxia. Michael Phelps, ADHD as well, and I strongly believe Messi is autistic. Um, there's quite a lot of, sort of information out there on that. Um, but yeah, like I say, I, I'm not sure if it's actually 100% been confirmed, but that's the you know, perception. Um, next slide. So, moving on to mental health. Um, so we said the word disorder, yes, um, over the week for autism, ADHD, whether it's a disorder or not. There are mental health disorders. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of different mental health conditions, disorders, so we're not going to go into every single one. Um, we're going to look at uh, some of those. So one of them is obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, I think most, <coughs> most people have heard of that. Um, <coughs> there are sort of common misperceptions with that so I might look at some of those in a bit. Um, so what other disorders have we got? So we've got OCD, uh, cover the next bit please. So we've got generalised anxiety disorder, um, we've got social anxiety disorder, <coughs> excuse me, depression, <coughs> so bipolar, sorry I should have put bipolar disorder there, sorry bipolar disorder, there's also borderline personality disorder as well. Come on for the next bit. So PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Again, a lot of you may have heard of that. Um, schizophrenia as well. And as like I said, there's, there's, there's many more. We're not going to go for every single one. Um, you know, we would need for a week at least to probably go for everyone in, in sort of detail. Um, next slide. So, what are mental health disorders? So, everyone has mental health, um, but not everyone has a mental health disorder or illness condition. Um, so you could have you know, a good level of, of mental health or healthy level, you could have disorders. Um, so that's the difference. There are many types of these disorders as I've touched on, and there is you know, there's such a wide range of them. Um, Lots that you won't have heard of. Um, they can affect your mood, your thinking patterns, your behaviour as well. Some are very, you know, severe in the sense of you know, it can affect your daily life. Um, you know, others can be managed easier. All come with their own challenges, um, but also their own strengths as well. Uh, so we're going to look at a few of those now. So next slide, please. <clears throat> we start with anxiety disorders. Um, you know, some people only know anxiety disorders one thing and don't realise there are many types of anxiety disorders. Um, you know, PTSD is one. Uh, panic disorder. Um, but we're going to focus on some of the ones that I have the most sort of expertise in. Um, so we'll look at some of those now. So next slide, please. <coughs> Got the 
next slide, please. I don't know. So, um, so we're going to look at generalized anxiety disorder. Um, some people would shorten that down to GAD. Um, so I often refer to this one as sort of ran random anxiety. Um, sometimes don't know whether I'm going to um, not have it. You know, sort of suffer from it. Um, you know, for me, and this, I know a lot of people said the same, you, you could do the same thing um, twice, but only get anxiety over it one time and not the other. Um, <coughs> so there can be some unpredictability with it, which doesn't help. Um, obviously, it swings around about sometimes, you know, if you know you're going to be really anxious about something, that's not good. But equally, if, if you don't know you're going to be anxious sometimes, then you are, that, that can just sort of startle you even more. And next bit. So some of the <clears throat> some of the um, symptoms linked with that are ongoing or excessive worry, um, concentration. You may become irritable and restless. Fatigue um, is a massive one with anxiety because you, you know, if you are worrying a lot, you're getting stressed out. You anxious um, it can affect you physically but obviously it can affect you mentally it can then therefore affect you physically as well you get really fatigued and next bit increased heart rate um, you know if you're in a position where you, you are really anxious um, it can affect you your heart rate as well and next bit hyperventilating as well as another um, effect of that as well. Next bit. Muscle tension, um, you can just completely tense up, um, even if you're not necessarily realising it. Next bit. You should tense up your whole your whole body and of course that can lead on to fatigue as well if you, if you do it too long. Sleeping problems, you may be constantly struggling to sleep, that be overthinking things, worrying about things that have happened, worrying, worrying about things that, that may happen. Or things that will never happen, but you still sometimes think about it. Next bit: sweating. Um, you know, if you're in public and sort of really struggling with it, you can, like I say, you can have heart problems. You can have ventilate. You can start to sweat and go really cold as well uh, on the opposite side of it. Next bit. Impending doom, so you might be constantly worrying about what again what might happen, what has happened. Next bit. Overthinking. Next bit. Lightheadedness. And um, that is a lot of people say they struggle with that. Uh, next one. Stomach cramps. Um, and this is where you know a lot of Say autistic people, for example, have anxiety disorders and co occurring conditions with you know, sort of stomach problems as well. Um, so that can be all linked in. Next one wanting reassurance, you may be constantly seeking reassurance from others. Um, so help you out a bit. Next one uh, loss of appetite. Um, I never, I never actually struggle with this particular one, but a lot of people with anxiety disorders do. Um, some may sort of just not eat all day. They might just you know, feel too worried to, to do anything. They might freeze. They might not even think about eating, um, which is obviously not good. Um, I think that's the last one before I move on. Is there anything you want to sort of comment on there, John? Yeah, no. There's a lot of stuff on there, and like, I suppose it, a lot of people have this anyway. General people have this, but yeah, apart from the, the sweating, hyperventilating, um, maybe uh, stomach cramps. Yeah, the, the rest is definitely part of me. Yeah, definitely. Um, sleeping problems. Don't really. And I've never slept through. I don't remember ever sleeping through. To be honest, that's scary. Um, Definitely overthinking. I think you're the same, aren't you? A lot of overthinking. Yeah. Yeah. 
mainly because you want to get stuff right, I think. But I don't know, just overthinking stuff. But um, concentration, irritable, restless, definitely a bit fidgety. Yeah. Generalized anxiety disorder, yeah. Never heard that before. Yep. That's a new one. Yeah, it, it, covers, all, it covers everything, doesn't it, to be honest? Yeah, and <clears throat> with anxiety disorders, there's a lot of overlap. Um, so I think the next one is social anxiety, so I'm going to look at, I think. Um, so there's a lot of overlap there. Um, but yeah, there are slight differences with each one. And there's, there's lots of other anxiety, so there's some, I can't even think of, um, some sort of, what you'd say, obscure, where you've not really heard of it or not many people have got it. Um, but yeah. Um, next slide. So yeah, social anxiety disorder. So as I've said, some of the symptoms are similar to generalised. Um, you know, social anxiety can create an overwhelming fear of social situations. Could lead to sufferers avoiding going to social events or communicating with, you know, even communicating with friends or loved ones. They might it might even get them that bad. Um, now what I'll say with this is a lot of uh, autistic people do have this as well. Um, but there are also a fair few uh, sort of neurotypicals who, you know, they haven't got ADHD, they're not autistic, etc. But they do have social anxiety disorder. Um, so yeah, it's not exclusive to autism when you're adverse to this one, uh, as is not any of the anxiety disorders. Um, next bit. So yeah, we've I've tried to add in some of the other ones on top of what we've already gone through, so feeling faint or dizzy. The next one. Again, the stomach thing, uh, gastric problems, um, accelerated heartbeat. <laughs> so this is a sort of um, a big one for social anxiety disorder. So reverse, I'm sort of doing it then, I suppose. Reversing what you're going to say in your head, uh, particularly if you're in a party or if you're in a team meeting so any even if you're with a group of friends you might think of something to say and you have to keep rehearsing it in your head just so you get it right and you don't look daft uh, next one um, reading too much into verbal cues um, now if you're autistic that can be a nightmare anyway because you might not naturally understand a lot of that anyway uh, next bit Presuming everyone's watching you, um, it's a big one. So you, you know, you go to go to an event or party. You walk in the room <coughs> straight away. <coughs> excuse me, straight away thinking people are watching you, um, even if they're not. Um, obviously, a lot of the time they are. Some of some of the time they are. So you're thinking that they're analysing every movement you're making, which in most cases are probably not. It's just you that's doing that. We, you, and you sort of you might know that, but it's hard to break out of it whilst it's happening. Um, next bit: <clears throat> over awareness of yourself. So I just touched on that. You're over analysing. <coughs> you're thinking, how am I coming across? Is anyone looking at me? What are they thinking if they do look at me? Am I walking funny? Um, am I walking too arrogant? Am I walking? You know, how am I walking? You know, daft things like that. Um, lots of things, you know, what clothes I'm wearing, do, do I fit in? Some people might be thinking I'm fitting in with others. Um, I don't know, is my fly undone? Are my shoelaces tied? All these sort of things. Next bit. Panic attacks can be associated with that. Um, some people with social anxiety disorder, yeah, they'll, they'll, go to, they'll go somewhere, they could even be on the, on the tube, um, on a bus. And they could just suffer from a panic attack. Could just get overwhelming. Everyone around them, too many people, too many people potentially looking at them or not looking at them at all, but thinking they are. Um, lots of other things. Next bit. Not asking for help um, is a common thing. A lot of people don't ask because they feel daft for doing it or think people are going to judge them, etc. So they won't ask for help. They may just struggle. Um, I'm not sure if there's an extra one there or not. Is there? Yeah, oh, I might have been looking at a few. Um, trembling, 
this can happen with some people with a disorder um, physically shake or feel like you're shaking even if it's barely noticeable um, or you can freeze as well um, where you just you don't feel like you can move you might sit down and think I can't get up and walk past people or you could be stood and not sort of have the right body posture body language um, not body language body posture because I don't know you feel like you you're stuck you froze next bit Avoidance, so as a result of some of these things and the ones we mentioned on the other slide, um, you may just avoid going to social events, avoid working, avoid using public transport, um, might avoid going to football matches or you know, rugby matches, cricket matches, because you don't want to be around other people in the crowd. Um, you know, going to Old Trafford, you know, 70, you know, 80, 1,000 people there. Um, could be a problem for you even if you really want to watch your favorite team play you might not be able to uh, is there anything you want to add with that one john no you've put me off going to united now i'm supposed to go in a weekend um i might take the kids but yeah over the past couple of years i've definitely uh isolated myself probably i don't know because of covid but i've definitely took a step back and not um social as I should be I've definitely gone into me sort of shell a little bit yeah, look, it's, it's a choice I like I like I like my own company anyway but yeah I, I, I'm not too fussed about seeing people to be honest at the moment so I don't know if that's down to the condition or, or whatever but yeah I'm quite happy in my own little bubble to be honest at the moment I'm not too fussed about socialising like even Christmas and New Year I'm not I've never, never been fussed anyway but I'm, I can't see myself going out to be honest especially now but yeah the self-awareness thing is definitely very i'm very self-aware myself like thinking every second like even when i'm out i'm always thinking overthinking stuff like looking at people are they looking yeah it's massive that isn't it yeah. you, you just do something you switch off can't they? and just and just enjoy the moment where we're always thinking what are they thinking what's he thinking what's going do you know what i mean so, you get that little break now and again, I do, but sometimes think, yeah, definitely overthinking situations doesn't help. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and I don't think I mentioned it in this presentation, I'm just thinking of it now, but there are a lot of people who can actually have problems with alcohol as a result of having uh, anxiety disorders. Um, I've known that there have been some cases where people have been drinking every day just to avoid feeling anxious. Um, even if they're going to work and things like that, they may have a few. Look, okay, I don't really, I don't really like drink to be honest. I remember back yeah. in the day, I had a reputation of like because I used to like going out um, a little bit. You know, they used to think, oh, he's a big drinker, but I used to, I used to pour off the stuff away or didn't even drink it. But even now, I'd be happy with just one glass of wine, a Guinness. But now I don't drink at all. I have a local pub and stuff, but I very rarely go in it. Um, I just don't enjoy drinking, to be honest. It, it, and trust, it, I don't like the way it makes me feel. I don't know if it does other, other autistic people, but I don't like the way it makes me feel, to be honest. I don't feel like I don't feel like I'm in control. I, do you know what I mean? I like being in control of me, yeah. myself. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. like feeling that vulnerability sort of thing. I don't know, but it doesn't. I don't. I don't like the feel of, especially the, the, the days after as well. Um, not just hangover, because I really, I always know when to sort of stop anyway. But yeah, it's that feeling of that, that heavy head. I just don't like it. It doesn't. It doesn't feel good in the brain. You know, it doesn't feel good anyway. But yeah, I tend not to drink. Yeah, I think um, I've not spoke to loads of autistic people about it, but I, I can see why. You know, you're saying about not losing control as such, but that I can't remember how you phrased it, but that sort of part of it, sort of want to, well, yeah, want to be in control exactly how you sort of feeling and everything rather than letting drink influence that I can see why a lot of people would mm. would would be like that um, well a lot of people drink yeah. to be somebody else don't they yeah you know they're un 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 uninhibited aren't they yeah I'm usually trying to mask stuff when they drink anyway but I, I tend to want to be myself anyway so I don't want to change myself yeah and I think drink drink definitely does that to people and I think they like it because they become a different animal don't they want to have a drink yeah. Where I tend to, if I go out with my friends and stuff, 
and they're all getting you know drunk and stuff and and they're like oh we have a drink i'm like no i don't need to you know and i'm watching their personalities change it's amazing to watch i actually do it sometimes just so i can watch them do you know what I mean? so i can see how their their personalities change yeah uh, but yeah i'd rather just stay the same i, I, I don't need to change to be honest yeah, I, I quite enjoy seeing other people get drunk and stuff because there's that side of it, like you've said, and I also feel a lot of people become more honest, which then, I'm in my element then, because, you know, I get some people when they're drunk and say, oh, I don't know, because when, when they're not drunk, they put on this front and all this stuff and mask, well, not even mask, well, I suppose mask themselves, um, I suppose, in a way, but, you know, I get I tend to get more honesty out of people when they're drunk, so I kind of enjoy that um, I'm sort of I feel like I flipped it, flipped it over then where I can be in control of it if that makes sense so but yeah um, no I mean obviously everyone's different I mean I think with people we some people with social anxiety disorder but not autism not ADHD not anything else um, I think some of them will turn to drink just like I say to as you've said to, to be someone else or to I think to take some of the anxiety away, um, yeah, it's, there are some things out there for people who, who have been, like I say, drinking and sort of working and stuff at the same time, which is quite horrible. Yeah, it's, it's not healthy, not good at all, and um, it's a shame, really, because um, people, you know, yeah, lost I was supposed to go out this stuff. Friday, but I've cancelled it. I just don't feel like I want to do it, you know, I don't feel like I need to go out, to be honest, and... Um, yeah, I don't, I don't fancy, especially now as well. With all this, I think we're going to end up in lockdown again, to be honest. So, you know, each their own. But I just feel like I'm, I'm, all, I'm, I'm happy in my own little bubble, to be honest, at the moment. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to be um, socialising at all over Christmas, to be honest. Yeah, and just, just last bit. I'm just thinking in my head now. Is there any anything you want to share? We don't have to. I'm just thinking like. No. Sorry, go on. That's right. No, that's right on everybody. Yeah. Um, right. We'll move on to the next bit. I don't think there's a bit on that one. Yeah. So OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Um. Obviously, I mentioned earlier about. I keep going back to the word disorder, with autism, ADHD, whether it is, whether it isn't. Um. I think the general conception conception with OCD. Um. Yeah, it's a bit of a tricky one because there are similarities with ADHD, some similarities here. Um, it fits into the mental health side of it, so that would lead, lead more to the disorder word. However, there are some strengths that come with it. Um, so OCD is often misunderstood. So I say it's type of anxiety disorder. Um, and it's much more, I don't know if severe is the right word, but it's a, there's a lot more to it than people actually think. Um, some people say it's just about cleaning, so they'd be like, well, I've got, you know, um, everyone who's got OCD just, just likes to be really clean, which is not the case. Some people do, of course, there's people who, because that's the extreme in that sense that people have seen, they might have seen on films where people keep cleaning every every day, um, so that can be part of it, but it's not, there's a lot more to it than that. Um, and not everyone does have a little bit of OCD, which is a common thing as well, so you know, it's an easy easy phrase you'll have heard a million times, you know, or I must have a bit of OCD or I'm a bit OCD about it. The problem with that is that people with OCD can sort of not be taken seriously. Like with the autism thing, if you're saying I've got a little bit of autism, it can it just belittles what autist people go through or what people with OCD go through. Um, so yeah, please bear that in mind. It can be I can never say that word right, debilitating, uh, I've just done it then. And it's one of the worst disorders to have. Um, I forget the thing now, it was on, it was on the top 10 uh, worst things to have on, I can't remember the website now, um, was it World Health Organization? I think it may have been. Yeah, World Health Organization. It was on the wor one of the top 10 worst things to have on there. It does bring its own strengths. Um, so let's have a look what OCD is next bit. So, um, oh, hang on a minute. Uh, I don't know why that's. I don't know what I've done there. <laughs> Ignore that bit. 
ignore that bit. Can we have the next bit, please? Yeah, I don't know why that bit's coming there. A bit random. Strange, because that's linked to the anxiety bit. Hmm. Don't know what's happened there. So anyway, look at some of the symptoms. So hoarding can be part of it. Um, you're collecting things out. Some of the things I've collected. Um, uh, beer bottle tops, uh, beer mats, which is not unusual for anyone. To, you know, you don't have to have OCD to do that. Um, there are hoarding sort of disorders as well. Um, so you can collect random things. Um, some people might collect pens. Um, sort of hold them, they don't necessarily need uh, boxes. Sometimes I've done that in the past, like packaging for like fancy packaging, like a box or a label or a bag or something. I might save it and never use it, but I have no reason to keep it whatsoever. Um, next bit. Um, so I've missed always fine. So constantly checking things over and over. This is what one thing I do. So if I lock my car, I know it's locked, but I'm just going to do it again. Um, I'll check the door as well, check the door about three times, i open it three times. Um, some people do light switches, uh, flicking light switches on and off. Um, sometimes I'll check, again door seems to be a big one, if, if the door is locked, I know it's locked, I'll go and just check it is anyway, if it's in the house or the car. Um, yeah, lots of things like that. Symmetry obsessions can be a big one. Um, constantly liking symmetry of things, you're looking at something, you want it to be even both sides. An obsession you can have is you can sometimes make things uneven just so you can make them even again. I do that a lot. Um, sort of mess with my fingers, I try and make shapes with my fingers and then I'll make them out of sync just so I can get them back into sync again. Um, next bit. Some people are OCD, obsessed with contamination, they're really sort of worried about that, you know, worried about catching something. Um, I'm not too bad with this one, I'm not bad with this one, but I'm trying to think of people. Um, yeah, it can get really bad to the point where they don't want to leave the house, they don't want to, um, you know, if they go in a restaurant, they might not want to eat because the tables might not be spotless or the cutlery, people are giving cutlery or plates, things like that, they might want them completely checked. Um, some people, if they work, if they're in work at an office, they might just constantly go and clean the office all the time. Looking at sports coaching, um, they might constantly clean the equipment, like the cones. They might, they might have to be spotless every time. I, I don't know if anyone struggles with this, maybe, but I'm thinking about it. If you know your coach putting cones on the field, you know it's on the grass. You know is that going to get sort of contaminated? You might want to keep. Touching it, obviously that'd be a nightmare if you're coaching, you'd never never get anything done. Um, yeah, after every each session, you may want to clean the equipment all the time. Um, just on the OCD side as well, if, if you're putting netting up, you know, tennis nets or football nets, whatever it is, it might have to be perfect, symmetrical all the way through. So if there's like a bit that's uneven, you may want to go and correct that. Um, if you're putting some barriers up for the sidelines for the parents to stand behind, it may have to be in a complete straight line. Um, what else is there? I don't think what other sports there are. Um, if you're marking a pitch, so it's pre-season or whatever, you, you're doing the lines on the pitch. Um, if you go a bit wonky one of the lines, you may then try and do it all over again and sort of mess it up, keep going over it. Um, next bit. So obsessions mentally so you might have repetitive worries. This is a big one with ODA. ODA. I'm making up. I'm mixing up ADHD and OCD now. ODHD. Um, obsessions mentally. So you might be worried about the same things. Things like similar. This is where it's similar to the, the anxiety, the generalized anxiety. Uh, you might just keep repeating over and over. Um, you might have made a mistake somewhere in the past and keep repeating it, or or even repeating something that you've never even done but keep repeating that in your head for some reason. Um, recurring thoughts as well. Next bit. Constant worrying or fears. Next one. Distressing images in your head. 
I've got some examples of those in a bit. Um, you can have some really disturbing thoughts. Next one, which again, if you know, if you're explaining to people and they don't understand, then it, it doesn't look too good. Isolation, you can you could become isolated. You know, if you're constantly worried all the time, or if you you want everything clean and spotless, you might end up never leaving the house. Next one. Oh, uh, no, that's not good. I can't see that. Oh, no. Let's hide that. There we go. There we go. One second while that comes off. Right. Constantly replaying past memories over and over. Uh, so I touched on that. Next one, if there is one. Nope. So, symptoms of OCD. Uh, the main example that I use is the intrusive thoughts. So people are generally aware of the cleaning side of it or having things in order, you know, straight lines or whatever it is. <clears throat> they might know about the light switches, flipping them on and off, that sort of side of it. Um, but they don't, a lot of people don't appreciate or know of the intrusive thoughts side of it. Um, like I say, some, you know, this is just leading on to some people saying, We've all got OCD, or I've got a bit of that OCD. People can like to be clean, they can like to be presentable and have things in order. It doesn't necessarily mean they've got OCD. Um, intrusive thoughts are an integral part of life for most people with OCD. Um, so, yeah, we're going to look at some of the worrying, tense, uh, intrusive thoughts that people have. Um, now, just before we go through these, because these, some of these can be quite alarming. Um, you know, all this list is not. You know, not everyone has every single one. These are just some that the people have between them. Um, just to make sure, just so you're aware of that, most people have OCD never act upon these thoughts, never actually do anything about it. Um, however, it, it's really fight. It's really hard to fight it off. Um, you know, you always sort of manage a way to not do anything about it. But the point is, the thoughts in your head, and you have to block it out. Next slide. So we're going to look at some of these intrusive thoughts now. So next one. So um, <clears throat> these are some of the things that, pe that go through people's head. Um, so in this example, if you could be um, could be in a bar, like a rooftop bar, um, where you're looking over onto the city or whatever. An intrusive thought could be if you get too close to the edge, you want to just just jump off. You don't even if you don't necessarily like want to, as in, if someone said you want to do that, they'd be like, no, of course I don't. But the, the intrusive thought in your head can sort of want you to do it. You can imagine it. You can sort of stand off it. You can imagine yourself standing off and sort of flying off. Um, again, even if you don't want to. So as a way around that, you just don't stand as close to the edge. Um, that's sort of work around that. Um, so in that case, it's important not to try. And, you know, if someone stood on the edge of it and sort of said, "Oh, come on, let's have a photo," and you say, "No, I don't, I don't want to do that," just understand there may be reasons for it. Next one. So some people unfortunately have these sort of things. You know, if you've got a ba baby, you might have an interest for to throw it or something like that, which is, yeah, again. As I've said, mate, most people with LCD don't ever act upon these things, so that's just a point, point out. Next one. Uh, punching a loved one for no reason. Um, again, you know, could, could be someone you really it usually happy. With OCD in, intrusive thoughts, it tends to be like, what's the worst thing you could do right now? So it could be like, you might not want to punch, it might take to punch someone you don't like, it might take to punch someone you do like, which is. Even, even worse, so it's like could be a parent or something. It's just like, yeah. Next one. Swearing randomly when it's really quiet, or shouting at someone. Um, yeah, if you're in like a, a waiting room, let's going back to sport thing. You could be in a team meeting, you could be at a press conference, and um, could be doing an interview with someone on the TV, and you could be like, oh. I've, just got an urge to swear here. Uh, next one. 
you know, for your train station, something like that, you might get an urge to jump in front of it. Again, most people don't do that, and that's not to be confused with people <coughs> who are suicidal, actually, unfortunately, may want to do that or decide they're going to do that. Um, the thought could just tell you to do something, you're like, no, I'm not doing that. Next one. <coughs> yeah, if you're driving your car, they might be urged to sort of just think, they might vision it in the head, or like, what happens if I just turn my car off, off the road here? Again, most people never act upon it. Next one. Running through a window. Um, you might envision that in your head. Next one. This is a, a common one, constantly thinking about family members dying. Um, next one. This this one, you know, thinking about touching someone friend inappropriately, um, you know, even if you don't find them attractive. Again, it, it's sort of what's the worst thing you could do right now in your head, uh, or the most inappropriate thing, or the what's the, the thing you'd got, what's the least thing you'd want to do right now, and this is what it sort of can tell you. Um, I don't know if there's another one on bottom, but do you want to add any, do you want to add any input there, John? Yeah, um, the OCD. Yeah, to fear, growing up, I never thought I sort of suffered from that much, but over the years now, there is one thing I always tend to do, is, well, I don't think the night time, I always lock up and everything, but there, there's a certain window in the down, in downstairs bathroom that I'll always know, know it's locked, know it's shut, but I'll, I'll go back out and do something, and then I'll go, and I'll go, oh, I've got to go and check again, you know, just little things like that, you think, but I think a lot of people have that anyway, just, just a little... Yeah. The people who don't know OCD, I think it's just something in people anyway. But it's one thing that I always have to check now when I do it two, three times a night. It's madness. But <laughs> I think I know it's short. I've just done it, and I'll go and like uh, make a quick brew or something before I go to bed, and I go, oh, is it short? Just something in the brain just triggers, doesn't it? It's yeah. it's, a, it's it's crazy when you think about it, and you know you you literally just done it, and like yeah, we're switches and stuff. I think more to save money on electricity bill, but yeah, I always make sure all, all the lights are off and like the um, the switches are off anyway. I do that anyway. That might be an OCD thing, I don't know, but yeah, there's, there's that downstairs window that pisses me off that I have to do it every night. I always have to. I have to make sure that it's done two, three times. It's it's, it's mad. Just even the, I think it's the the feel of it as well. If if I can describe it. Yeah. It's actually touching it and knowing that you've jiggled it a few times. It's, it's crazy. It is crazy. It's just a malfunction in the brain. It's just like, just that little feeling of like, yeah, I've, I've, I've twitched it. I've, 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 um, I've touched it a couple of times. Yeah, it's fine. I can go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. But yeah, just some of the things. That, I find it funny, to be honest. But yeah, sometimes the OCD, it can, the serious side, can take over people's lives, can't it? That's the other side, which is horrendous. I know um, I room with Dave Beckham, and, he, and I noticed straight away from the first day I met him that he had something not wrong with him, but I knew I knew something wasn't right. The way he used to have all his clothes perfect, lined up, his aftershaves, all his little do. I put it in the book anyway, but yeah. his uh, deodorants and stuff, and and like the dig the digger lads, and even myself, we used to mess it all up just to wind him up. You know, I'm thinking back then, you think, oh. I, to fear, I, I, never, I don't think I even heard of OCD back in the early 90s, to be honest. Yeah. But I knew something wasn't right, and we used to mess all his clothes up. He used to go barmy. Do you know what I mean? Even now, he's come out and said that he's OCD. But uh, I suppose that's what's probably driven him to be, you know, one of the best players in the world at the time, you know. But, yeah, just that perfection that he, that he craved. Some people want it, don't they? That perfection, where they think, yeah, it's got to be right before I can move on sort of thing. So, you know, in football terms... He would have to go out and hit like 100 balls free kick before he could, you know, go in. Just little things like that, you know. Uh, Cantona, like, just like um, doing repetitive touches. He used to go out every morning and smack balls in the air, you know, little things like that. You just think that could be a little bit of an OCD there, you know. Obviously, again, they, they want to perfect their skill, but it might be, you know, a bit of like an obsession that they have to do it before they can move on with the day, you know, little things you don't think about, sort of things. But, yeah, yeah I, I'm not too obsessed about it, but it's just, it's just that one window that I always have to make sure I have to jiggle it a couple of times. It's like infuriating, but I literally could just brush my teeth, walk out the door, done it, and think, 
I'm going to do it again. You know you're going to do it again. Like, I'm talking to someone thinking, nah, you've done it, leave it. Off up the stairs, go on, go and do it. <laughs> and I have to go fucking back down again just to make sure. Mm. I go, and I think, you done f- you've just done it. What, what, what? <laughs> I'm literally talking to myself, <laughs> you know what I mean? You've literally just done it, why are you going back down there? Do you know, it's funny, isn't it? Yeah. I'll even laugh at myself sometimes, I think, yeah. what are you doing? You've just done it, you're walking up the stairs, but you've got to go back down again to do it again. It's like, you crazy, you crazy man. <laughs> it's mad, but yeah. yeah. you got to laugh sometimes, but it is what it is. Yeah, I think it, I think it's best laughing about it. It, it is. It gets really <laughs> frustrating and stuff. Sorry. Yeah. But yeah, it's... Yeah, better to laugh about it. Because like I say, some people really, really take over lives and... I think can. You, I, I can see where yeah. the obsession can just take over, thinking, oh my God, imagine if I had it on, on every little thing, you know, it'd be a nightmare. And I only have it that, like, literally takes five seconds, like, for me to just go, yeah, done it, bang, do it again, done it, and I forgot about it. But some people's like, they can't even get out the front door, you know, just a little thing, I think it must be a torture yeah. um, to deal with that obsessive, you know, nature. But, yeah. Yeah, really tough. Um, there is someone famous uh, in history, Howard Hughes, um, sort of around in the 20s. Um, there's a film about it, The Aviator, um, which is where he sort of took it to the extreme. As a, I think he was a billionaire, who would have been in today's money. Um, he, he ended up dying ultimately because of it. it. It just took over him and he ended up holed up in a hotel room, I think, for so many years, I think, towards the end. Um, but yeah, so it can get you really bad. Um, but yeah, it's just finding ways around it. For, yeah, you sort of take the mick out of yourself, I suppose, don't you, with it and sort of laugh about it, sort of get around it. But yeah. Yeah. Um, anything you want to add on that before we move on? No, mate, done. Okay, next one. Oh, I thought there might be one missing, one sneaking on the bottom. Oh, this, this is an awful one, this one. I hate this app. I hate having this one. So yeah, if someone's someone's told me someone you know family member <coughs> died or something like that, it's the intrusive thought tells me to sort of smile, and it's horrible, um, really horrible. <laughs> so it's like, what's the worst thing you could do right now? I'll laugh at him. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. Um, but even sometimes if I'm talking about my own family dying, sometimes I'll laugh and I'm like, it's you know. But yeah, nightmare. Uh, next slide. Um, depression, um, so this one, there's still a lot of misunderstanding about this to be fair, um, and it can it can be hard to sometimes disting- distinguish between depression and just feeling down for a bit, there can be, you know, is it depression, is it just I'm not having a good day or whatever, um, <clears throat> so usually it lasts for weeks or months, um, you, know, you can get it when at any time, it can occur because of certain events happening um, you know if you're just having a bad day that tends not to, to fit into that you know you, it has to be a bit of a prolonged period of time because um, everyone has obviously good days bad days anyway um, many things can cause it um, say key life events uh, if you lose you know parents or partner that can send you into a state of it you know losing your job you can you know if you've got a high-end job if you're a football manager, um, you know, you manage a top club, you lose your job and then you, you don't go straight back into another one, you, you're out of work for a couple of years, no one wants to hire you for some reason, even though you've done quite a bit in the game, whatever it is, rugby, football, whatever, um, that can have a serious effect, obviously the top end of the game, um, you've seen people suffer with it, um, you know, people are retired from sport. Um, you know, they're on that high of, you know, competing at the highest level, then all of a sudden they're, they're finished and they don't know what to do with themselves. Um, that can be a big thing. Um, getting divorced obviously can be very stressful, or things involved with that. Um, you, know, you could lose, or your family lose your house. Um, you could sort of spiral. Um, family history, you know, if it's in the family, it can be a high chance you suffer from it as well. Some people, when they give birth, they get um, they suffer after that. Um, 
Yeah, just going to look at some of the symptoms of it next bit. <coughs> so some of the things that can be linked to it, it's so feeling sad. Next one. Suicidal thoughts can creep in. Um, you know, if you're, I'm thinking if you look in the sports world, you know, if you're, if you're an athlete, a player, performer, or a coach, manager, you're performing at a high level. Or even if you're not even at a high level, you could be low down the chain, but you're sort of really enjoying it. Um, then you lose your job, you have to leave for whatever reason, you fall out with someone, something happens, it can quickly spiral where you, know, you get up each day thinking, well, I don't know what to do now. Um, it can sort of be negative in that aspect. Next bit. Like with a lot of these things, fatigue, um, it can just get you down. You, you know, if you're feeling happy about yourself, even if you're not getting much sleep, you could sort of get through it some days, whereas with depression can be the opposite. You could want to sleep all the time. Um, it could just drain you. Next one. Sleeping problems, similar to the other conditions. You know, similar to anxiety, you're constantly worrying or you're just, you know, some people with depression sort of are not there in the sense of, you know, they just don't care about anything. They've, they've lost all hope and stuff. Next one. Or oh, they might have sleep problems, they might just want to sleep all day and never get up. Irritability, so they might start snapping at people, get irritated with themselves. Next one. Frustration, similar to that, they may get angry at others, take it out on them or take it out on themselves. Next bit. Loneliness, um, you know, they may isolate themselves, not want to talk to others, sort of shut off. Next one. Loss of interest in normal activities. So, you know, if they're, they normally like playing tennis, um, that's a big hobby they do, then, you know, something's happened in their life, whatever it is, and then all of a sudden they, they don't want to do the things they're now enjoying. You know, the footballer, rugby player, they might do extra drills after practice, taking free kicks, or working on, um, you know, kicking in general or whatever. They may start wanting to do that and then they might sort of gradually start wanting to do the sport altogether. Um, next one. They may stop looking after themselves. You know, may think, what's the point? What's the point in getting up? What's the point in sort of getting ready every day? <coughs> Particularly if they're sort of in all day, they might stop, stop you know, shaving, grooming, washing regularly, etc. etc. Next one. Our next slide. Oh, um, yeah, and then just leading on, leading on to that, not sort of showering, shaving, etc. Next bit. Uh, sorry, just so my bad. Can you just go back to that one? Is there anything you want to add there, John? Yeah, the, the part of depression bit. Yeah, the only time I felt that was literally when I was coming to the end of my career. Um, well, I decided to retire at 29, didn't I? Yeah. And um, just the, the route, the same routine, monotonous, it did drag me down. I'm not even sure if I was depressed, to be honest. I put it in the book that I probably, I might have been, but I didn't really see because I was such a strong character mentally. I was quite strong uh, in my thoughts. I felt like I was um, probably just like, how to explain? I pushed the depression away in a weird way because yeah, I, I felt I. I couldn't, I couldn't afford to be depressed, do you know what I mean? Just get on with it, you know, just sort of put it to the back burner sort of thing. But I might have been, I don't know, it's weird. Because I know hardcore depression is the when you literally can't get out of bed. And I was never like that. But I definitely did feel sadness, obviously, fatigue, irritability, sleep problems, no suicide thoughts, frustration, loneliness, yeah, all that. And just any and, and day, well, I quit football 29, who does that? Do you know what I mean? I could have played for over 10 years, to be honest. I was that sort of fit, but I just decided I had to get out for me probably mental reasons as well. Because I didn't, I didn't feel, I didn't feel happy to be honest, you know. So yeah, I might have been depressed. I don't know. I didn't really see anybody about it. I just sort of dealt with it myself and just, just got on with it as you sort of do. Sort of back then, you know. It's, it's you know, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's a bad thing in a depression, especially if, if you've got it. But for me personally, yeah, it was just. Um, 
I tend to be quite a upbeat person anyway, so I sort of I masked it obviously. But I just sort of go on my life and dealt with it myself to be honest. Not good though, not good is it? No. No. Yeah, it's like I say it's a fine line between, you know, are you just having are you just not feeling quite right or feeling a bit down or are you actually depressed? There's that that fine line there. Um I think what I'm going to say now, there was something else. Um, oh, yeah, just, just being autistic as well, or being, you know, having ADHD or just neurodiverse in general. Because mm. you can think logically more, like what you were saying, you sort of, you may have, have felt it, but sort of told yourself you can't be. Because, like, logically, you might think, well, what's the point of me being sort of sad? What's the point of me staying in bed all day? Because I need to get things done or I want to get things done. So you can yeah. sort of force yourself to do it. But you can still be suffering from it at the same time. So, yeah, I mean that's that's the thing with depression. Like some people say, you know, they've got depression, and people say, well, how can you have depression if you're sort of still working, you're still doing whatever? Whereas they can still have it, just that they're, they're pushing themselves and sort of, but still struggling at the same time. So, yeah. Um, next slide. <clears throat> So, um, just a little bit more. So, all the above conditions can affect your employees and customers. So, like I say, if you're a sports coach, um, you may have a, um, a kid you're coaching or an adult you're coaching, um, they may be going through tough times when parents may die or whatever. So, it may affect the performances, whether or not they want to come training all the time. Um, you know, same with coaches. Um, you might have a manager who's dealing, who's going through a divorce or whatever, and is, you know, is living out of a hotel or something like that. It, you know, that could affect the work. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of different examples. Um, you know, if you're coaching kids, they might be struggling with a lot of things at home, um, dealing with a lot as well. So there's there's lots of different things there. So it's about, yeah, you know, they might not say anything about it. They might just carry on about the daily business, but but just just be struggling with it. Um, yeah, so please try to remember if they're displaying the signs, um, or if they tell you I've got I'm depressed, I've got depression, but they don't look like they have. You know, don't dismiss that and sort of say, "Oh no, you haven't." Um, so yeah, this is coming towards the end of this session and um, you know the last four days. So uh, hand over to John in a second. Just like to thank everyone for attending. Don't forget, we've got some sessions on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, now, the I'll tell you the, the, the time. So tomorrow, Friday is 10.30. Saturday is 10 a.m. And Sunday is 11 a.m. Uh, we'll have some posts going on about those as well. Um, so a bit more from us there. Um, but yeah, just like to thank you for all listening um, to the last few. Um, yeah been great working with John so far I'm going to do some more sessions in the new year as well so we'll let you know about those so stay in the group to see more um, social media as well um, yeah been great working ex-professional footballer um, look forward to continue working with you John um, yeah do anything you want to add there <clears throat> yeah it's been a good week to be fair enjoyed it obviously we're going into a lot more detail a bit more depth I suppose uh, ongoing in the future. Um, looking forward to getting started. I think January we're going to start, hopefully, um, with some businesses and other people so where, where we can sort of get people converse with each other, you know, uh, not just me and you sort of thing. So we can um, delve right into it, can't we, with the other companies and stuff. So and just see, yeah, like I say, I like to talk anyway, but, you know, it'd be interesting to see how um, employers. Um, employees, whatever, and um, we can all get together and discuss, you know, their businesses and stuff, and how they how they're dealing with um, employing people, you know. So it'd be interesting. But yeah, looking forward to it. Um, and uh, yeah, like I say this week's been learning for me because I've realised I've got a lot of these traits which I didn't think I had. But l l listening to you and listening on here, I've definitely got a couple that I think bloody hell. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely OCD, ADHD. I read all that, you know. I never thought I had, to be honest. But, um, yeah, it's quite uh, eye-opening, to be honest. But, yeah, it's been interesting, mate. That's what. Um, 
so yeah, just lead on to what John's saying as well. Yeah, um, love to work with you know clubs, businesses in the future as well. Um, we do have some sessions in the new year, so we'll let you know about those tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday. So we'll tell you about what that entails. Um, we'll be able to work more closely with businesses. Um, I'll say go into more detail. Um, you'll be able to ask us questions uh, in the sessions we've got in the future. So we'll have live sessions on Zoom. Um, you know, we can really help your businesses who may have employees that you're saying, I don't know how to manage them. You know, they say they've got dyspraxia, how can I work with them? Um, you may have clients, you may be coaching people. Um, you know, they've always been a bit different. They, they do this, they do that. How do I sort of get them to do different? You know, can work with you on how, how to, to manage all that. Um, so yeah, got a lot, a lot coming up in the new year. Um, I think that's the last slide. I will just double check. Can you just click next bit? In case I've missed anything. Yeah, I think that's it. So yeah, thanks everyone. Um, we're going to end it for today. Like I say, join us tomorrow at the times we've stated or catch the replays. Um, thanks everyone. Thanks to John. And we'll speak to you all soon. That's what I meant. See you later, guys. Cheers, everyone.